This is what the cone looks like when it's completed. So you can see our line of stitching down this side. And if you measured everything right, your cone should match up with the body of the cylinder. So when we actually put this in, we're going to be putting it in this way. Now before we put that in, we want to put in our anti-escape device. So you just take that little strip we had and you want to bind one side just like we did the cylinder. And so you can see it's a little cylinder with little pointy ends on it. We're going to need to take that and actually whip stitch it to the end of this. Now, if you notice, this hole is a little bigger than this and it kind of free floats in there and that's okay. When you whip this together, this end is going to kind of come in and get really tight. So I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. I've gone ahead and I've done one already. You can see how the end sort of dips in. So it's going to be a little tricky to do this and you can see how some of the stitching looks kind of uneven. So long as your gaps aren't any bigger than the half inch squares of the mesh, you're fine because I mean the mesh isn't perfect either. It's got holes in it. <laughs> so as long as the holes in your stitching aren't any bigger than the holes in your mesh, you're fine. So it doesn't have to be super tight and super neat. This will work really well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to this. And But the next step is we're going to actually have to do this in a larger scale and actually attach this to the main body here. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up the other comb and then I'm going to stitch these to the inside. And it's very simple, basically the same thing we did with this stitch, but you're just going to be wrapping around wherever you can find a hold. You just want to wrap, 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 and just keep going all the way around. So I'm going to show you what that looks like when it's done. Here we go. Alright, here are both the cones attached. So you can see here, you just kind of want to whip this fairly loose. You know, it's not super tight. There's, there's still a little movement and a little bit of play. Like I said, as long as the gap isn't any larger than the mesh, you should be fine. You don't want it to be too tight because, you know, while this does lend to some, some support to the trap, at least for me, the whole point of this trap is that, you know, it can get crushed, it can get squished, and it's not going to damage it. So... Here's that. Now all we're going to do is attach the door. So you've taken your door piece and you want to basically just line it up along the top seam here. You just whip it together. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll show you what that looks like. One thing I like to do is actually keep the door open like this. You can see it's completely open. And then I have access to this fairly easily, just whip it. Now you don't want to pull super tight because this is a hinge. You want this door to be able to open and close. And we're going to go over this two times, so it's not really important to... Uh, what happened there? It's not really important to have this be tight. There can be some play in it. So I'm just going to keep on doing this until I go down. Then I'm going to come back. I'm going to do this row and then come back and then finish it off at the end. So I'll show you that when I'm done. Right, here's the door finished. Now to get it closed, what you may have to do is just sort of grab it and pull the door part over onto the top. So what I mean here is, you can see here, the door pieces are up on top, and on here they're on the bottom. 
you just gonna need to pull it up and over that way it can easily close you don't have to worry about babying this you don't have to be too gentle just kind of get the door to close Once you do that, there we go, the door closes. So now we're going to work on a simple latch. There's a lot of things you can do. If you wanted to, you could just take a piece of string and tie this in the middle or tie it on two sides. If you got a large enough rubber band, you could put a rubber band over this. You can tie the whole thing shut with a big piece of rope. What I like to do is make a little hook out of wire. You can use any type of wire you want. I've been using clothes hanger. So if I'm using a clothes hanger, I like using the coated ones because they don't show rust as quickly. But what I like to do is What I like to do is, with a pair of pliers and my wire, I like to just take the end here and bend it back a little bit, not too much. Then I go and I bend it around and this becomes my hook. That's a little small. So make it a little bigger. There's my hook. Then I go about an inch or so down and I make a full loop. Pull my pliers free. And then snip that end off. There I have my little hook. Take my pliers open it up. Now I've got this hook, I just take it, place it on here so that this hook is facing down like this. I take my pliers and I just crimp the bottom so that it'll hold together and it won't move. Then I just bring the door down and then find a spot to hook it on. There we go. Now that door is secure. It's not going to open up. It's not going anywhere. And your crayfish aren't going anywhere. So There it is. That's the main body of the trap all finished up. So now some things you might want to add. You can add a rope clamp or something similar to the outside of this. So this is what I usually use. It's a little clamp like this. So you could just take it and see if it will let me do it. You just hook it onto your trap. And as far as rope, pretty much any kind of rope will work. I like using probably propylene rope as it floats. You can use paracord, pretty much anything. I prefer to use darker colors because I tend to leave my traps uh, on the ground, or the trap lines on the ground. They're less visible that way, less likely to be stolen. But if you're actually going to use floats, you may want a brightly colored line. But that's pretty much it. Another thing you can do is actually take some of your rope, tie on either side up here, that way you can attach to this little handle. The benefits of doing it this way is that, you know, when there's a lot of weight in here, it's pulling from two sides instead of just that one point in the middle, so it can take a little more 
it can hold a little more weight. Another thing that's nice about this is when you're carrying a your trap around, you have a handle to hold it. Here's our finished trap.